XL1067. This is Jade with your Monday morning weather update. Things are looking up. Clear skies all week. A cool 77. It's going to be beautiful. Ordinarily, Jim went about his day waking up at the same time he usually did, getting dressed, brushing his teeth, saying goodbye to his wife, heading out the door. All of this without thinking much about safety or about how many risks and hazards he faces every day. And he most certainly didn't have any idea that 50% of slip, trip and fall accidents don't even happen at work, but rather at home. Jim would get to work and go through his day, everything as usual. Possible dangers and hazards just weren't on his mind. The usual causes of slip, trips and falls went completely unnoticed to Jim, and therefore, slip, trips and falls themselves were not a possibility in his mind either. Things like boxes in the walkway or a puddle on the floor left from a spill, all of those sorts of things, and he'd pass by without any concern. Why should he pay attention to someone else's mess? Well, what he didn't know was that employee exposure to wet floors, spills and excess clutter increased the risk of slips, trips and falls and serious injuries. These injuries include head trauma, back injuries, broken bones and even paralysis. It was clear that Jim also had absolutely no idea that more than 600,000 Americans are permanently disabled from workplace slips, trips and falls each year. In a situation like this, in a split second, a casual step can turn into a treacherous slip and fall. When one's foot bumps into an object in the way, say a tool or a box, or if one's foot drops to a lower level unexpectedly, as when you encounter a hard to see step, this usually means enough of a loss of balance to result in a trip. A fall can be much more obvious. Falls usually happen when a person is thrown too far off balance, an example of an opportunity for this would be when standing on a precarious ladder. One can also do what is called a step and fall, where their front foot lands on a surface lower than expected. In this case, one may fall forward or sideways and might even roll one of their ankles. Or there is also the type of trip and fall where one's foot strikes an object which causes their body to suddenly stop. A rise as small as three-eighths of an inch in a walkway or steps can make this type of fall occur. Same level falls are a frequent occurrence, and yet they result in fewer injuries. And then there are elevated falls, which are more rare, but they tend to cause more severe injuries. Oh, but Jim wasn't so worried about these things. He had his own job to do, and he just preferred leaving the cleaning to the others, whoever they were. Jim was always a sure-footed guy. He didn't think about falling because he never had. Of course, he had a share of clumsy moments, but they really never happened at work, and he really hadn't seen anyone else fall either. But falls from risky high elevation areas like loading docks are incredibly common. Over 60% of elevated falls are from less than 10 feet. Loading docks and ramps are frequently congested and walking surfaces can become wet and slippery, especially in the morning or during the winter. Clearly, they're a hazard, but not for someone as confident as good old Jim. Fall injuries are most commonly fractures, usually fractures of the hip, spine or forearm. These are also known as osteoporotic fractures. In past years, medical costs for this type of fractures exceeded $6 billion. That's a lot of injuries, and that's just a little proof of how common they really are. Hip fractures are the most serious and cause the greatest number of chronic post-accident health problems. An everyday hip fracture, including all medical care, can cost an average of $20,000 in the first year after the injury occurs. The edge of a loading dock plate can wear smooth and become a slippery and dangerous spot. Accidental moves and backward steps can easily result in a fall from a slippery dock, so it is important to move with caution when working in a loading area. Indeed, it was a day just like the rest, until Jim had his first experience with what we call a near miss. At that very moment, something changed. Something that would stay with Jim for the rest of his life. XL1067, this is Jade with your Monday morning weather update. Things are looking up clear skies all week, a cool 
77, it's gonna be beautiful. Jim slept quite well last night and was glad to wake up and get off to work. The alarm clock was usually quite a bother to him, but not today. One of the best things you can do to prevent slips, trips and falls is to wear the proper footwear for your specific work environment. This means you should keep yourself informed of the safety standards for footwear at your workplace or job site. In most warehouse and manufacturing environments, the shoes or boots you wear should provide three types of protection. The soles and heels should be slip resistant, the toe of the shoe should resist crushing, and the shoe should provide ankle support.